Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Art, we were talking about movies. Mm. Well, when we talk about movies, um, you and I can talk about movies, but it doesn't compare to talking uh, to Manny Pacheco. And the next time we speak to Manny, uh, I think it's uh, appropriate to ask him if there's in all the years that movies have been around, over 100 years now, has there been a, a single year that, well, that stands out? So let's see if we can find Manny. I know, I know well, he's Well, let's bring Manny on. What are you waiting for? You Hi. got the switch. Hi, Manny. How, how are you? <laughs> okay. How are you? Okay. So, so, so you, Manny, both of you are devils. You know that? You're just devils. Oh, we're, oh yeah. We're working on it. We, we don't have our advanced degree in devil -tum. But we're working on it. So, so is there in, in in if you had a look at the vast number of movies that you know about and the studio system and and the, the Hayes Code and, and the whole wide oh, gamut sure. of movies, is there a year, a particular year that might stand out above all the rest? I've got a couple of favorites. 1994 is a standout. 1962, just a remarkable year for movies. But I think most historians, most film lovers, and I would have to agree that that magic year is 1939. 1939, the year of Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz. But quite frankly, if you dig deep, you find that there was such a grand collection of modern classics all in one year. And the list is remarkable. Wuthering Heights, Stagecoach, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I mean, just so many great dark victory with Betty Davis, uh, uh, the uh, Son of Frankenstein, the, uh, the Roaring Twenties with James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. Uh, the, the, the Sherlock Holmes series started with two great films. Uh, the Hounds of the Baskerville was the first uh, that all all came in 1939. Um, and let me just say that uh, if you take away Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz, 1939 would still rank number one in my estimation. Wow. 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 Oh, they, well, listen, there was a great year. There's no question about that. Um, what was it about that year? Why that year? Why? Why were so many really great quality films done in 1939. What do you suppose it was? Anything to do with, uh, I don't know, the war or? Well, it was before the war, and that's that's the key. The studios had finally figured it out. They knew what they needed to do to, to create grand uh, productions. You remember Irving Thalberg we talked about previously? Sure. He set the stage. And so all of the movie studios, Paramount, 20th Century Fox, Universal, uh, particularly MGM, Warner Brothers, they they figured out what to do and, and they know how to do it. The problem is that the war does interfere and all of a sudden you take away people who are very creative. Um, they go to war. Uh, directors go to war. They make uh, war films. The actors go away. And so you can't rec replicate 1939 because the war gets in the way. Uh, so 39, 1940 looks good too, but boy, 39 was that year. But, you know, let me just mention one other thing. There was one particular actor that really shined above it all in 1939. And it's not an actor that most people think about. In fact, I, I feature him in my first book and that actor is Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell happened to appear in five productions in 1939. Wow. And for his effort in one of those productions, he wins the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. He was the supporting actor of 1939. He was the father of Katie Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. Yes. He was the reporter, the intrepid reporter in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. He also appears in uh, 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 The Hunchback of Notre Dame. He uh, appears in Only Angels Have Wings, and he wins an Academy Award as Doc Boone in Stagecoach. He was everywhere, and he lent so much worthy support in so many superior productions. He was very few, but he was uh, not able to really match that output after 1939. It was such a remarkable year. 
Uh, he was a great character actor and uh, memorable. And, you know, there really aren't, I don't think today, they're ju- that category of actor, ca- quote, character actor, I, I'm not sure that exists anymore. I think well, everybody's too good looking and too handsome and too pretty. And well, you got Paul Giamatti. He's a great character actor. He could have. He could have been. That's in, true. But I think, in any. But you're right. Few and far. But between. I think also uh, it was still the the studio still controlled uh, the actors at that period of time, so that they could say to him, "Okay, you 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 finish lunch, and now get over to <laughs> Studio Three because you've got a whole new role." And then, oh, you finish dinner. Get over there because we need, you know, uh, you over yeah. there. So that doesn't happen as often anymore. I think that's part part of it. Well, right. and you know, that year there were some performances that could have won an Academy Award in other years, but because they all fell at the same time in 1939, well, you know, they're forgotten. Didn't even get nominated. Didn't even get a nod. I think of uh, Victor McLaughlin in uh, uh, in Gunga Din. Fabulous, oh. fabulous performance. Gunga Din was 1939. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. 39. Yeah, can you believe it? And and Victor McLaughlin's performance. He had already won an Oscar, but but his performance nonetheless was masterful. How about Lon Chaney Jr. in in as Lenny Small in Of Mice and Men? Really, that performance was so good that Universal immediately found their Wolfman because of that great performance in Of wow. Mice and Men. And let me offer two performances from The Wizard of Oz that I would absolutely have considered as Oscar worthy, but forgotten. Uh, Margaret Hamilton as the witch. Yes. Uh, was there any better performance that you've ever seen of a bad person or of a villain? No. I, she was just, she was, she was perfection. And of course, Frank Morgan as the wizard. Oh, yeah. just great performances. And they're all forgotten because there were so many great, you could only pick five. Yeah. That was it. You could only pick five. So what are you going to do? So those were all terrific performances that went by the wayside, and what a shame. Uh, Basil Rathbone in Son of Frankenstein, he was great. And remember, he had just perfected the uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, character, so Basil Rathbone got ignored but shouldn't have. He was also very, very good. Wow. What, I mean, was- you, you know, as you go through these offhanded throwing in other films from right. 1939, uh, you're right. It was a really incredible year. You know what I want to do in the future, Manny? I want you to talk about those other two favorite years. What did you say, 94 and 62? 94 and 62. 1962. We'll save those for another conversation. I'd Absolutely. Like to know, I'd love to. I'd like to know why those years are so good. And, I, I, and I've got the reasons as well. Uh, you know, and another film that I don't want to ignore, probably one of the great B films. It was never going to win any award. But it, for so many reasons, this film was such a good film. It came out in 1939. It was called Five Came Back. And oh, it's yes. the, the first uh, disaster film ever made. It's about a plane crash. Yeah. Uh, there are nine characters. The, the title of the film is Five Came Back. I think you can figure out the ending. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great ensemble piece with Chester Morris and Wendy Berry and Patrick Knowles and John Carradine and C. Aubrey Smith and a remarkable performance by someone that no one really knew about, but she was going to have a tremendous career in the future. And that was Lucille Ball. Really? Wow. Yeah. Five came back. If you ever get a chance to wow. see it directed by John Farrow, it's a terrific film. Also came out in 1939. I'm telling you, 39 was the year. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> All right. Know, so we know it, what we're going to talk about next time. Yeah. 94 and 62, is it? 1962. Yeah. In the meantime, keep watching those films so you can give us all the history from forgotten Hollywood, forgotten history. Sure. You bet. And and we'll buy the book and I'll start memorizing it so I can keep up with you. Book series, of course, available on Amazon. So yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. Manny, thanks so much. Thank you, Manny. You bet. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.